Welcome back to Let's Play Castlevania Lords of Shadow. I'm Burning Dog Face. My health ain't so great. Well, it's kind of a running into a dead end straight away. I saw the thing. I mean, I know it's not actually a dead end. It's just this one I might be able to come back from. No. Erg. Alright, alright. Fine. Fine nagging voice in the back of my head. I'm going to go find out what's over here. Oh. Yeah, have to check a look. Can't even see where the So there's much chance of Whoa, really? Great. And I held the wrong trigger. Uh This guy doesn't have a health loot jam, I'm kinda fucked. See you soon. Although they are big, spiders are surprisingly quick and agile. I've heard a skilled warrior may even tame one to a certain degree if it tires enough and ride it like a warthog. What? I've also heard that their webs can be used to weave bridges strong enough to bear the weight of a grown man. Incredible. Perhaps I am losing my wits stuck in this infernal place. I must be crazy to believe such a thing. Ah! Fucking spiders. Well, I can see there's nothing over there except an obvious battleground for another fight, so let's take this one. Oh god. Holding. Holding. If I find some lichens, I'm totally gonna just fuck them all up with the daggers. Hey, safe way. Ooh, a thing. I guess I should. Ah, I do feel like going back and just constantly doubting my uh, staff. This is actually how I play God of War, but it's significantly less stressful and less maddening. Because, uh... Well, at least nobody's watching. Where's this go? Ah, yes, okay. Now we know where the other one went. No, up? Okay. Okay, what do you think, folks? Is this more or less annoying than the beeping from Zelda? always tricky with a fixed camera. Well, I regret this immediately. So 
so much to remember. I don't even remember how to do the stomp. Well, I have more health this time. Let's say I go avenge my death. Let me make room. Need a dick. that glowy thing back in the other room. So that just turned out to be a healing chamber. <sighs> I have to know. And now we get to find out. <laughs> okay, fine. You know, I've heard bits and pieces of people, uh... What is with that one angle and not letting me walk properly? I guess there, uh, must be goblins in the area. Hello, goblins. Weird. I've heard bits and pieces of people, uh... complaining about the lore. Again, I say, it's supposed to be a reboot, right? Oh. You can see that, like, fucking ND3. Like, uh... 2008, they put out a, uh... A new Turok game that was just called Turok. And, uh. Unlike in the original, where it was like, Turok is the title of an ancient line of warriors who protect a magical other world filled with, you know, wizardry and high technology working together, and, uh, fucking dinosaurs never died out here. Like, this really ridiculous, crazy setting. The reboot, uh,. told the story of a man named Joseph Turok, who uh, was stranded on a uh, planet where an evil corporation of the future had been uh, you know, conducting uh, illegal experiments in cloning dinosaurs. So a much, much less fantastic and therefore much less interesting setting. But I still liked that game. It wasn't trying to be one of the old Turok games. It was trying to do its own new thing, and I could respect it for that, even if it wasn't entirely successful at that. And so I'm just sort of looking at this as, this is an adventure that happens to have a lot of familiar names in it. You know, not necessarily looking at this the way I would look at a uh, handheld Castlevania game that was a uh, action RPG. See what this guy had to say. 
Everywhere I turn, there is death and decay. God has deserted us. I have abandoned my quest. It is hopeless. I don't want to die, to end up like all my fellow brothers, fallen by the wayside, destined to be a resource for some other adventurer. I don't want that to be my fate. Well, congratulations. You weren't even helpful. Many of the Brotherhood of Light carry these magical discs. Uh, light gem medallion. Right, yeah, okay. Uh, they allow the user to transform neutral elemental orbs into power for light magic. Magical gems can be inserted in the empty slots, and when all five slots are filled with blue gems, the light magic container's capacity is increased. This one is given to Gabriel by Zobek the first time they met. I don't know, I'm just saying... Uh... I'm not, like, dismissing these problems with the canon. I'm just saying that, uh... I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt even if the story is completely out to lunch. Uh-oh. What did this even used to be? A creepy ass place. Eh. <laughs> there am a dead man up there. Well, maybe this goes in there, gets an item, and loops around that way, huh? Maybe I'll get lucky. I doubt it, but... Well, and that solves that problem. Side note, I really like the relative simplicity of uh, Gabriel's outfit. It actually looks like a uniform a uh, organization like that would wear, aside from the mismatching gauntlets. It seems to be all about him. Uh, oh, fuck, I should have paid attention to see if Zobek was wearing mismatching gauntlets. Maybe that's a thing. Oh, look at that. This isn't the same one, but still! There are a lot of dead guys down here. I have been following the trail of Reynaldo Gandalfi, a famed alchemist and fellow of the Brotherhood of Light. I don't know what drove him to leave the Order, or indeed why he disappeared into the wilderness, but we could certainly use his skills in this dark time, that's for sure. It is said he created many magical weapons and relics, and that he hides them in hard-to-find places where only the most committed and deserving may stumble upon them. I know this room. Huh. Maybe I'm not really in a position to be talking about it. I mean, I really only got into the Castlevania series with Aria of Sorrow, and there were a whole bunch of games before that. I played most of the handheld titles since then, as well as, uh... I was going back and playing uh, Symphony of the Night on uh, Xbox Live Arcade. Let me tell you, 360 controller, not ideal for that. The D-pad's kind of imprecise. 
and uh, analog stick naturally much more so. So it's really easy to like. Why am I demonstrating this? You can't see my fucking hands. Uh, hit. Uh, you hit a left or right on the D-pad, and it'll also be like very slightly up and to the side. And if it's up at all, then the game will interpret it as you hitting. You, know, you try to attack, the game will interpret it as you trying to use one of the uh, items that uses hearts. Well, I wish that had worked out a bit more in my favor. I didn't even get many globes out of it. I think I really have to put this focus mode to use, which sucks because I'm not very good at it. carrying me too far. Cool. Can I get half credit for that? Fuck. Ah, oh, that's what it is. He slips, uh, he strafes to the left and right ever so slightly while he's doing that doesn't walk in a straight line. That's what the leaning indicates, which way you have to uh, compensate for. Except, okay, where the fuck is the last key? I say last, but there are two of them. They made a, uh... Oh, you again. They made a, uh... Castlevania game for the 3DS. It was actually a sequel to this. Thank you! I believe it was called Castlevania Lords of Shadow Mirrors of Fate or The Mirror of Fate or something like that. Maybe Mirror of Destiny. Um Rest in peace, brother. Look at that. You can see the door it opens way off in the distance. Neat. I find it interesting that one, they would make a handheld sequel to this, you know, the God of War style game. I found it more notable in the, uh, the past, like, decade and a half. Uh, Castlevania games have been strictly on, uh, handhelds, because for some reason the powers that be seem to think that nobody will buy a 2D game if it's on a major console. Everyone would love to see a uh, Castlevania game with, like, the most powerful 2D art you can get in a uh, modern engine. I mean, we all saw how amazing Dust and Elysian Tail looked. Open Sesame! It doesn't work if you don't say it dramatic style. Ooh! It's one of these. I hope that's what these scrolls was about. That 
catacomb thing is cracked in exactly the same way. You got the arachnocide upgrade. Spiked Chain. Renato Gandalfi built two different chains to combat cross, but this one is never approved by the Brotherhood for obvious reasons. The el and in case those reasons weren't obvious, the elders thought that the spikes were too cruel for the holy nature of the weapon. However, instead of destroying it, the artisan hid the, hid the links in one of the mausoleums of the Order, believing that one day it might be needed. With a spiked chain, the combat cross can be used to saw through obstacles and to tame dangerous monsters by looping it around their necks. Looks like I can't change the other one. Although I do remember the description of the other one saying that it was, uh, every link was quenched in holy water when they were forging it, so, you know, that's already pretty badass. Hmm. I'm talking too much in this episode. My throat's all dry. So, holy water links, uh... Martyr, cru Martyr Crucifixion Nails for the Body. I guess it's just metal. But still! Two out of three ain't bad. Alright, let me just uh, check to see if I got a uh, checkpoint just there. I did! Excellent. Well then, in that case... We'll continue this journey in the next episode of Let's Play Castlevania, Lords of Shadow. I'm sure with this new chain, I can really put the fear of God into those enemies. I'm Burning Dogface, and I'll see you then.